So today I've got the coolest recipe for you all. It is a nanjong mung bean noodle. And nanjong is basically an area pretty much southern China, Guangdong province. And I've, I've done mung bean starch noodles before, but what's cool about this one is that it has that uh, creamy green color. And that is because they use the whole mung bean um, and then gets the starch out. But <laughs> consequently, it uh, has a nice cool green color to it. So I can't wait to show you all the recipe. So the ingredients in this recipe are few, which means that the recipe is really hard. Um, no, but um, you start off with some soaked mung beans, and I soaked mine overnight. You might just want to do it for at least four hours so that when we grind it up, it's kind of nice and soft and ready to go. And I'm just going to give these guys a rinse before putting in, so this is about uh, one cup of green mung beans, and I'm going to mix it in with four cups of water, and I am going to blend it in my Vitamix until it is just very smooth. Um, and then after which we will take it to the next step. So what we're doing right now is we're, we're capturing all of the fiber first, all of the green bits and whatnot. And what we're waiting for is for the mung bean starch to actually separate from the rest of the liquid because it's heavier. So it's going to settle to the bottom. But this process takes about four to five hours. You can even leave it overnight um, if you want to. After you squeeze out everything, you just want to take off a little bit of the foam up top because sometimes that tends to stay around. So you just want to keep uh, just the liquid uh, itself. So be very gentle with this process after the starches have settled. You want to pour away the top bit, the top liquid that doesn't have any of the starches. And we will be using this liquid later. So save, uh, save that. And then I imagine this is depending on your type of mung beans. But for me, for a cup of mung beans, I got about... 70 grams of starch and and that included a little bit of liquid so just around 70 grams here and there and you want to mix it with one part of the starch and five parts of that green liquid so i i had 70 grams of starch so i weighed 350 grams of that leftover green mung bean liquid 
and now we're gonna start cooking it. You guys are gonna see, uh, see the formation of the noodles. So what you want to do is slowly bring this mixture up to a boil, so right around medium heat. And what you'll start seeing is it clumping up, getting a little chunky. So it's very much like when you are thickening up a sauce with cornstarch. Same thing is going to happen, only we're going to get this mixture quite thick. So after it does come to a boil, you want to cook it for probably like three, three to four minutes. For me, I kind of took it out a little bit early. This was my first time making it at uh, probably like a minute 30. And what I found was that if you cook it for a short time, the noodles are a little bit more brittle when you cut it. So it kind of snaps and it breaks um, when you touch it. But if you cook it a little bit longer, the starches have kind of more, more of it because you're evaporating more of that liquid. You're going to get noodles that are not going to snap as much. It's going to be a lot more um, uh, kind of resilient to our cutting later. So this bowl was not oiled or anything. You'll, you'll notice that uh, the noodles come out actually quite well without doing anything to it. The only thing is make sure to have this bowl ready when you are done cooking the noodles because it, it sets so quickly, but while I was filming it, it had already started hardening um, in the pot. So just, just make sure to do that. It only takes a couple of hours. You can just leave this covered at room temperature um, and it really just starts setting um, immediately. So during that time, we can go on and prepare our sauces. So from what I've seen um, in street food, there's, there's a couple of main ingredients here, but one is going to be garlic water. So you just wanna mince a couple cloves of garlic, mix it in with some um, uh, water. Uh, my middle one is going to be like a sweetened spiced soy sauce. So recipe is all going to be down below, but it's really by taste. I have some soy sauce, some sugar, and some five spice, and I'm going to water that down a little bit uh, with water. And then the third one is supposed to be Chinese roasted tahini. Now I didn't have that, so I just used regular tahini. But what you want to do is to thin that down. And that process is just, you start adding in a little bit of water first, the tahini is gonna get chunky, but then as you stir it, as you add a little bit more water, you're gonna get a thinner but smooth tahini that is very easy to spoon and, and spread.
So water is going to be your best friend here. You don't need any oil. And if you see some of the street food vendors, they are amazing. They chop super, super quickly. Um, for me, like, like I had said earlier, this, uh, because I didn't, I feel like I could have cooked it a little bit longer, but because I didn't, it had a tendency to kind of like be brittle, kind of like agar is, is brittle. Uh, but if you, you just take your time, take your time, um, and then get these into strips and then, uh, we will start putting the noodles together. So any additional ingredients you choose to put on is personal preference, but I know a lot of people will put the Chinese preserved mustard greens, like the da tai on it. Um, I, I put some parsley on, which was I think supposed to be cilantro, but I never really see cilantro on the street food anyway. Um, but it was just for me to do some, uh, some food photography with. So yeah, as, as you wish, as you like, treat it like noodles. Um, it's served cold. Uh, it's definitely a summer dish and what people will do is they will actually buy the noodles in in the bowl shaped form and they'll just take it home with them so afterwards uh, when they are home they can just cut it up by themselves they can have some for dinner they can have some for lunch uh, the next day so it's quite a convenient uh, a vessel <laughs> They're such tricky little guys. Um, but a really, really fun recipe. I always like these springtime kind of like jelly style noodles so that you can serve it cold. You can mix it with just really any ingredients that really light up, um, light up your flavor palette, but it doesn't need to be, you know, hot temperature wise. So you can just eat a ton in the summer. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this recipe. And as usual, if you want to see more recipes like this, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys all again next time. Bye.